Okay, so we're uh, outside. Decided we're gonna do a still life with some pumpkins. Um, we couldn't get them in the shot, so hopefully we're gonna be able to uh, post them um, so you can see what I'm painting. But there's three pumpkins. And so uh, I decided I wanted to paint outside because I wanted to use sunlight, all right? And this is a perfect place. So I set up a little black piece of foam core behind it and down below. And we got the three pumpkins there, and we're gonna work on an 18, 18 by 24 piece of hardboard, which I coated with matte medium. So it's got the natural look of hardboard. I know there's some people like to work on raw linen, and if you work on raw linen, you should do the same thing. You should uh, coat it. So we're gonna try and compose this. It's, it's almost a square composition. So I'm gonna use the shadows as part of what I'm gonna use running off the page, which means I'm probably gonna put the main pumpkin, meaning the large one, probably about, I'm just looking, about here. Yeah, and over to about here, and over to about here. And that kind of envelops the, the, the size, and we've got this wonderful little striped pumpkin which sits about here, down near the bottom, and kind of takes up this kind of space. All right? And then we've got the wonderful pumpkin, and one of the things I was trying to find is pumpkins that had those wonderful twisty kind of uh, stems coming off them. And I got a, this, this little tiny one back here is really terrific for that. So um, I'm standing about five feet back from this. This pumpkin's a little bit bigger than this pumpkin, so we want to get it out here a little bit more. And it twists kind of this way. All right, now actually I wish I, I would like to move the whole, everything over just a little bit, believe it or not. And I'll do that when I start blocking it in. You'll see what I mean in a second. All right, we've got a black background. I set that up on purpose. So. I'm going to take um, my big old sloppy brush, gesso brush. I'm going to pick up some ultramarine blue and some asphaltum. That's my that's my black. It's a little too warm. I just throw more blue in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of get this background in. So I've got something to work against. But if it drips, it drips. I never worry about that, particularly in the beginning. Time to worry about that's the end. Because then it'll it could mess up some of your your great painting. So this we want it. I wanted the stem to be just a little bit off center anyway. So that's why I said I'm moving everything over just a little bit. The faster you get the background in, the sooner you can get into the meat of the painting. So I always kind of shoot to get that laid in pretty much as quick as I can. Cast shadow coming off to the right. Background really, the black, the ground plane is actually the same color. They're both black, but the ground plane is receiving light, uh, sunlight. Therefore, it appears a lot lighter. So we're gonna get this, the dark in first. really ripping through the, uh, the paint here. I came, I went down too far, but I don't care. By going down too far, it just means I have to overlap, which is great. So we've got it kind of set up here. Actually, I'd like it over a little bit further. So um, that's basically the setup of the three of my three objects. Now, the background, if it dries, if I've added a little too much turp and it dries a little light, I will just darken it later. But what this gives me is a good base to work off of. The next thing I'm gonna do is kind of indicate where those ground plane shadows are. So this one is about here, comes from about here, and it runs off the page. That was pretty quick. And we got a 
we'll sneak one back behind. Now the ground plane itself is lighter. So let's get that in lighter. Okay, I'm gonna move a couple of these. So I'm gonna take the same color I've got. I'm just picking up a little white in the same color, moving it off to the left and I'm warming it up a little because the sunlight is warm. So what am I warming it up with? A little bit of the asphalt. And I think I accidentally got a little bit of a ochre into it also, but let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna go right about here and give the little bend and the break right in there. Paint's pretty juicy, meaning it's got a lot of medium in it, a lot of combination terp and a um, little bit of solvent for each out, but it's pretty much, there we go, we're gonna get it down and then we're gonna bring it down from about here and over. Maybe throw a little more ochre into it, huh? And we'll get it. We wanna cover this. And I'm only just barely five minutes into it. But boy, that's just gonna save me a ton of work later. Because I may have to do some adjustments. Oh, I love the light hitting right there. Now that light's gonna change and it'll probably be gone, but I'm gonna use it while I see it. It's the same. It's the same concept as when you're, if you're painting plain air. You have to paint the light as you see it. And when it changes, don't necessarily change everything about your painting to change with the light. Now that, that has a continuity. It goes from here, behind, and a little higher up. Okay, so we've got kind of the, the basis for the structure of the painting. Now, I'm gonna set that brush aside for a second and I'm gonna grab one of my big oh. sloppy number 12s. And we're gonna start in on the shadow side of all the elements. Start with back here and we'll work our way forward. So we're gonna, we wanna mix up a color and value similar to that shadow orange that I see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, yellow ochre, a little of the cat orange hue that I have laid out here. Now that's going to be really bright. So I'm going to dull it down with a little bit of either blue or in this case I just grabbed a little asphalt and I'm going to test it. Boy, that's closer than I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't like to do this hard. It, it, I, I like to paint with the concept of planes and not necessarily make this the far edge as sharp as you might think. Because what happens when you, if you have a real dark and you put a sharp edge here, you call attention, you call more attention to that area. So it's better, truthfully, to keep that edge a little soft. That doesn't mean blur it. That means when you lay it in, don't paint such a hard edge. Okay, so get it all, where does that shadow go? It comes over here works its way down here and envelops a little over 50%, a little more than 50% of that pumpkin. About there. And we've got a few little stripes. That These are just placeholders because they're not right. Okay. And also, if you notice, as the shadow of that goes down, it darkens down here cast a shadow from this little pumpkin. And all I did is I mixed some of the background color into it to get it darker. We'll just darken this a little bit, okay? So it just, just darkens. See, mixing right on, the, right on the surface of the painting. So we're gonna leave that alone. It's, this pumpkin is a lot more of a yellow color. All right, that being the case, we're going to make more yellow. So we're going to take more ochre in it, but I'm painting the shadow. And the shadow is quite orange. Ochre and orange 
not necessarily white. Ochre, my, ochre, this might do it right here. I think it will. Now the shadow is not one clean flat color, like I'm painting it, but that's how you start. Simplify. Don't start complex. Finish complex, start simple. That comes up about in here, works its way up here, here. These are kind of marks to, to let me know kind of what I'm doing. The bottom of that, I want that kind of crude right now because I will sharpen it up, clean it up as we progress. But for right now, I want it like that. So that feels pretty good. Now, the foreground pumpkin, forget the little orange stripes because we that's called local color patterning. We're not going to deal with that right now. What we are going to deal with is the base color, which would be a very cold yellow. So I'm going to start with Naples yellow. And I'm going to add a little bit of my green to it because I see it get cool. And I'm going to test this right here. It's a little too light, I believe. Bring more ochre into it and the green. Now let's dark, let's tamp it down with a little ultramarine blue and see what that does. I tend to think this is a pretty good color right here. Yeah, we're going to start with this. Overlap. Paint into the paint. Don't paint alongside the paint. Like that edge. Don't like that edge. Can't hit a home run every time, everybody. That's pretty good. I probably have it over a little too far. I think I do. Uh, it doesn't bother me a lot. I can always go back with this color and carve it back down if I want to. Okay. Uh, so we have the basic, the basic shadow side in. All right. So now let's look at the stem. The stem, the shadow of the stem is lighter than the background. Not a lot lighter, but lighter. It's warm, but not hot. So I'm using my two standard colors, the blue and the brown or the asphaltum. I made it a little too fat, but that's Easy enough to fix. You just take this color. Whoops. Had the ground plane color and didn't mean to. And you just carve it down. You make the shape you you were hoping to make in the first place. Other shape. On this one, it's I'm gonna leave that alone for a little bit. Uh, I am gonna start on the light side of the pumpkins themselves. We're going to start in the basic light. We painted the basic dark, so we're going to paint the basic orange here. And I'm going to bring it over further to about here. Uh, right about there. Okay. So, we'll start with ochre. We're going to take the cat orange light hue. Maybe a little Naples into it. Let's see what this looks like. That's not too bad. I don't want to paint that bright spot. You guys are all probably seeing the real bright. We want to kind of come with a nice medium, colorful tone. So we're going to start up here. A little bit behind, just a touch. Now that's going to disappear, but I like it. So I got to get it now. Bring it over. I'm looking for the shape now. And then down. purposely painting outside. So that wasn't a mistake. That was kind of on purpose. I, I want to loosen up those edges. Step back. So 
uh, I, I'm painting about five feet away from my subject, just so you guys know. I want to get rid of some of that pigment that I don't want to dirty up my color, so I'm just going to wipe, wipe it a little bit like that. You know, that doesn't mean you'll get rid of all of it. It means you'll get rid of enough of it so it won't be thick and completely contaminate. So bring it down. And then create that edge of that cast shadow off the... I'm looking a step back to see. It looks pretty good. It looks like I could add a little bit more of it. A little brighter orange wouldn't hurt. leave that alone for a little bit I don't like I think I, I need to work that shadow over further but that's all right for right now I'm gonna lay off that brush and I'm gonna pick up a smaller brush I'm gonna pick up this filbert um, number eight and I'm gonna mix up more of a yellow color for that right near that color for that I'm using Naples and ochre and just a, just a touch of orange to warm it. Maybe I have a cad yellow deep, but it's a real cheap one. But it worked pretty good there. Let's see what this does right here, okay? A back hump. That color is not bad. shape bear down when you need to be be really when you bear down you're being very authoritative with your paint all right which means this is what I want to do and you put it down there like yep that's it that may not be it just so you know but you put it down like it's that that goes back to that line that I use all the time about paint like you know what you're doing that's just what I'm doing here Now I've got this, I wanna move that over. See how I moved it over? Fingers are handy things to have when you paint. That you can write down. I'm gonna bring this up since I have it right here next to it. I'm just gonna, not quite. I almost have that next to it. And there is a shadow coming from the stem, which is right about in here. Okay, so I kind of indicated that. Now, let's leave these alone for right now, and move down to this, and we're gonna go, that may be a, almost a pure Naples. A pure Naples just might do it. Not guaranteeing that, but I'm gonna start with that. Start with that idea in mind. It's probably a little cooler than a pure Naples, so I might just, just let my brush tickle that green and we'll start about there once again paint paint like you know what you're doing and if you're wrong you can wipe it off with a rag you can scrape it you can do all kinds of things but it's better to do that than to be really timid with your paint And as it goes down, now as that goes down, oh God, picked up, way, I meant to pick up a little bit of ultramarine and I overdid it because as this goes down, it gets a little bit more of a gray green kind of a color right about in here. Okay. Now go back to that first one that I was using. I'm using almost all pure paint now, not a lot of medium, not a lot of anything, just this pure we're going to bring it over. When you lift up like that, what you do is you create a blend without working hard to create a blend. Now, you may do that and it may be wrong, and that's okay. Let it be wrong, but do it, lift up, 
and you can correct later. So we've got, now to me that feels pretty good. Uh, I think I need to go back to that shadow color, which I think is about in here. It is. And we're gonna be kind of editing back and forth for a while on a lot of this. Because we haven't gotten into the subtleties. We're just laying out the basic structure so now we can get into the subtleties. And that's where that's where the believability of this pumpkin comes. Let's pit, hit the uh, light on the stem. So I took white and Naples. That may do it. And I may take a little bit of medium with it. Because it's pretty light. Now if I twist it a little bit more, great. Toto. Sometimes I like to use, I don't have it with me. Didn't bring all my brushes outside. Um, and I didn't bring my um, Egbert. Sometimes stuff like that works really well with an Egbert. And the top just looks a little grayer. So I went back to almost the color I was using here. Now, if it's too thick and it's very bothersome, what I do is I just take a little bit of medium, pick up the background color, this color, and carve it. So I thin it out. So now it becomes a really... First few times I looked at paintings that had that kind of super thin line, I used to think always that they used super thin brush and not, and then through kind of playing around experimenting, I realized, no, you can put it down with any size brush and just go back and carve it, recarve it and, and make it work. So it doesn't have to be exactly 100% the way you want it with that first, first lay in. That's how you want it to look at the end. Now over on the back side of that stem, a little bit of reflective light. All I did is I took the shadow, mixed it with the light and added a little bit of, of ultramarine to it. For that, because you don't want it as light as the light, you don't want it as dark as the shadow. Okay. So let's leave that alone for a little bit, not mess around. This I'll worry about later. Um, I'm gonna get the background, clean that up. See, and that's how you re you fix things with negatives. So what I would do is I would take that background and reshape it. So I'm gonna go in with the shadow color, which is about here, and I'm gonna re-establish the bottom of that pumpkin. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna bring a little orange to it. And we're gonna start with some of the striations. Slightly oranger. Go back. As it goes down into shadow, we still see it. That's the trick. The continuity from light. This may be too dark. Nope, almost. From light into shadow. That's too, that's very heavy handed. So what you do is you fix it. Just brush it, brush it around a little bit. You can fix it. Go back to that nice, beautiful yellow and clean it up. The closer you get to what you might think is refinement, 
the more you're going to be using a more controlled brush because what you are doing is you're bringing control to it. So let's start up here. Basically, I want that pretty much the shadow color and I just want to continue it on up into, not dark enough. You can tell it right away. And remember, I, as I paint into that paint, sometimes you have to be a little darker than you think because it picks up that, it also picks up the paint that is already down there. So come in there, add a little bit in here. Nope, thought I had it. Uh, you know what it is, sometimes you think you have it and but you're picking up that this paint so even though it might be all right as you paint into it it is not quite where you want it now that's a little too red and it works its way down and then this shadow now the shadow may have changed somewhat because we're we're dealing with sunlight sunlight changes sunlight doesn't stay the same but we're starting to get that as we move over into the this area we're going to continue this over a little bit. And a little bit here. Then it dissipates. Now, as it goes into shadow, on the right side, it gets a little darker. So maybe I could bring a little miss, more asphaltum into that color. Let's give it a shot. What do you say? And we see it, and then we see it disappear, and we pick it up again as it comes down. I gotta stand back. Okay. A little bit more. Light there. A little bit there. And. Now, question might arise, and since this is not live, and I'm just assuming a question, do you have to paint the exact number of, of indentations? The answer is absolutely not. Every pumpkin's gonna have different kinds of shapes, different kinds of indentations. So you're, that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with all the variations. And this is where the slowness comes in. It moves very quickly in that first part that I was doing. But at this stage, it's quite slow. You look at it. Feels okay. Don't want to dwell on that pumpkin for too long because we want to get back to it later. Um, I do want to remix a little bit of the ground plane here and just fix the shadow there. Okay. So, let's move on to this pumpkin where we started. I'm going to put a little bit more variation in it. Step back, okay. Not knocked out with it, but I'm not terribly disappointed. I don't like this part of this pumpkin. I think I need to bring it out further, which I'm gonna do. Uh, we're gonna work down on this little guy down here. And he's got more going on. So first thing we're gonna do is do the shadow of those stripes. And they're kind of a dirty orange, right? So we're gonna start about here. That feels pretty good. Next one is real close. Picking up some uh, too much of the uh, color. There we go. Again, kind of a dirty orange. It's kind of some of the colors I already had mixed.
bit about here. You start to give a little characteristic to that. So it isn't this perfect neat stripe. Notice it more in these two. We've got a little bit, of, little bit going on in here too. A little bit. Not, a, not what you would refer to as a real strong indentation, but we get a little pull right here. And that goes into a much warmer color. All right, so we kind of have the beginning of this starting to work. I like that dark I just threw in there, by the way. Okay. I don't think, I think I'm, I'm too dark here because that isn't standing out, but that's okay because I, I want to come in with some reflected uh, light in there a little later on anyway. So I'm double checking now. I see another area as this comes down, comes down about here. All right, let's work our way back into it. Start to establish this little top notch up here. So I know I have to fix where it comes from. We have to mix the shadow. Shadow is going to be, it's going to be lighter than this, than that shadow. I think I might be okay right about here. I don't know. Probably a little darker than I wanted. I didn't capture the twist that I wanted. Looks like it's got a little bit more of a bump up here. And so I, I'll do that. And in doing so, I'll just take that background tone. And reestablish that shape. Okay. The one down below, similar. Right about there and the stem works its way up right there so we have we've established base the basics of the of all the pumpkins I want to reef I want to fix some of the shapes starting with this foreground one right down here so we're going to do this we're going to pick that bump up there we're going to get it there and there. Come on, I have some dirty color in the brush and that's why I'm getting a little bit of, of mixtures which I don't like. And at this point it comes from about there. Now I'm clarifying where I kind of block things in in the beginning. Now I'm trying to say, okay, let's be a little bit, time to be a little more accurate. All right, so we have some of that worked out. All right. Let's start to look back into each pumpkin. Let's go back into the top one. I'm going to get, I picked up, this is actually a cast shadow, by the way. It's being cast by the, um, the stem itself. So we're going to go in and we're going to see if I can start to amplify and brighten some of these areas that need need to be we need a lot more showing off here I got someone laughing at me man you ever paint outside and have birds or things go by and it sounds like they're laughing at you That's probably, that's too bright, but that's where I may want to end up. Literally, I may want to end up about there. Okay, back in the shadow, we see 
subtle lights. I gotta clean this brush. I, I keep picking up, I go to lay down a color, I keep picking up colors I don't want. So that is actually a little bit of a reflected light. The reflected light tends to be cooler. The reflected light, I see some right in here. So a lot of you guys may remember whether I'm pa painting a figure, whether I'm painting landscapes, I'm always talking about setting up for the next stage, which is what you're doing here. I'm setting up, like I haven't gone anywhere near as bright over here as, as we're gonna end up. I am gonna reshape this pumpkin though. I just don't like the shape of it. And it's gonna have a lot of light on it at the very end, right? I don't like that where it gets lost down there. Let's see if I, let's leave it alone. Okay. I'm gonna need to clean areas here. Now we're gonna start on this part of the pumpkin and start some real brights right in here. I don't wanna hit those yet. I, I wanna start with over in this area. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take Naples to that orange color I was just using. Cause what happens as it gets light, it bleaches out the bright color. So that's a Naples mixed in with that orange. And we're just gonna start to lighten that area right there. And the same here, we're start gonna lose. You step back. Okay. That's relatively close to what I was hoping. I hear my dog ripping something up. No. Is he? No. So when we're outside, uh, and we'll often kind of come outside in the evening and have a glass of wine or something, but the dog loves it when we come outside. The problem is, if we come outside and we don't pay attention to him, then he just starts to look for something that he can kind of maybe rip up. Okay, so we've got a little bit of light going on there, but that light extends down all the way down to here. Now that's a little, gets a little too dark. That's why I was afraid I might be a little too dark. All right, now I need to go back and rework that shadow. So you're constantly gonna be going back and forth. It's kind of a novelty. I don't really, haven't, haven't really done still lifes outside. I just thought, what the heck, it would sure be nice to Try it. It's working okay. We're gonna add, bring a little bit of that reflective light right there. And it's very subtle. You have to hunt for it. You have to look for it. It's not gonna hit you in the face. The light to shadow will always hit you in the face. Areas such as this, no. So the big pumpkin, it's coming along okay. Not knocked out about it. I think I need to get a little bit more color into that shadow. So I picked up some of my cat orange hue and I'm just bringing it back into the shadow a little bit. Okay, gotta be careful picking up too many dirty colors here. All right, let's go back up here. I want to be careful at the top. It's got a lot of light. It's got light. 
So what am I using for that? I'm using the ochre and the orange. Step back. It's starting to come. I'm gonna leave it alone. Okay. Let's work down on this little one. Ready? Let's start lightening that baby. So we're gonna take green mixed in that color for some reason. Okay, I'm going to see what this does. Um, that looks pretty good color-wise. If I mess the stem up, I'm not going to worry because I know I... That sits on top. Things that are on top are the things you're gonna finish right at the very end. I'm gonna add a little white to that color. Come in and we're gonna brighten it right here. Cause it gets a little lighter and right here. And right there. I'm gonna be really painterly with this. See, I, I got the strength, the value about right there, the value from light to shadow. But I want to go back into the shadow now and add some of the subtlety that I begin to see. Some of his texture. So I don't want to, I don't want to polka dot it because that's literally what it is. But what I might do is kind of slightly dry brush it a little bit. Step it back. Okay. Still got to work on that. The shadow transition isn't quite where I want it. Come on. Got too much dirty paint in the brush. Once again, probably should be using a couple different brushes. Sometimes I like the accidental intermixing. And sometimes it's really frustrating. And I'm sure you've all experienced both sides of that. Okay, let's move up to the front guy. This. First thing I want to do is I want to amplify the lights. So I took the Naples. It's got a little green. I've, I came in with some white. Still not all the way to white, but I've come in with some white. I'm just laying paint on. It's kind of, I like the, I, I do like the, there's a painterly look to this right now that I'm, uh, my favorite part of it is the painterly look. If I can get the values and colors going right, then I'll like the whole thing. Okay. Um, now let's amplify that orange, because what, what, that orange goes into light. See, it's, it's one color in the shadow, but as it moves its way into light, it becomes a lot brighter. And I can see it right at this point, getting pretty bright. And we'll bring the one right there, a little bit there, a little bit right there. So we've got those. Now, one thing I wanted to do, because I felt like I was off, and I still feel like I'm off, some of the shape, still need to work on that shape. So I'm going to pick up the background color. Fix that. Okay. 
right there. And this is actually casting a little shadow, believe it or not, right there. As that is, and I kind of lost it, I figured I was going to lose it. So we're going to come back and we're going to pick it up again. The shadow comes up and it works its way down. So we're starting to get, starting to get a little bit of light on this. Now, as we move into the shadow part of this foreground pumpkin, we pick up a lot of cool color. A little bit lighter and a little bit cooler. So we're going to try and see if that works. That's, cl that's close to what I want. Maybe just a touch lighter. A little bit lighter. So my first guess was off. And that's how I'm ending up with that. And then we get a little cooler down here. Still don't quite like that, that shape. I'm almost there. Just don't think I, I don't have it. I have it too far out on the side and not far out enough on that side. So let's do some corrections here before I continue. Because we're about halfway through. So I'm going to take blue and the the ultramarine and the asphaltum. I still have dirt in that paint. I'll be darned. I've got to grab another brush. I like that edge. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> it's, it's like, do I correct it? Or do I let some of that nice accidental brush work um, work its way into it? And in this case, I want to let some of that accidental brush work work its way into it. Damn to step back. Okay, keep going. It's got a nice loose feel. I think I'm gonna look for another brush. Okay, let's put a little bit of light on this one. Let's get a, he has a little bit of warm reflected light right here. And the whole thing has just, it's a little bit lighter. So I grabbed my number two, added a little bit, that took the color that I had on the stem and added a little bit of uh, Naples yellow light to it. Added too much Naples yellow light. Let's do it again. Once again, I messed the shape up. I kind of knew that was going to happen. And so you use your background to fix it. And there's a few little pieces of light there we want to hit. Number one, right on the tip, because this, see where that sun is coming from. So we're getting a lot of bright light right there. And we're getting, can almost use a pure Naples here. Little sliver of light. And this might change, but I so better grab it. There. And there. And then as it gets down on the actual stem, <coughs> it's a bright light there. And the same thing is kind of happening on this stem, where it's getting Nice bright light there, up the side, on the top, and then some variations. Not quite as bright, but we do get a little bit of ribbing. And that 
that light down there, there, and there. So we're indicating the feeling of that, um, the stem of that pumpkin. This is going to end up being a pretty painterly piece. Uh, more so than I had planned, but in many respects, that makes me feel good. I, I, I always try and keep my work um, a little more painterly. My tendency is to want to tighten up too much, particularly in a still life. Not that I don't like tight still lifes. I don't want to get away. I don't want you to... It's that when I look at paintings, the ones that excite me are paintings where I feel the paint, not where I just feel the perfection of the subject. And so whenever I can achieve that in my own work, um, I, I, I feel relatively satisfied. So you notice, we started with that big brush, and as I've continued moving along throughout the painting, I've gone smaller and smaller and smaller. That's because you're bringing more control to it. At least, I'm trying to. Okay, let's move back to this guy and we're gonna to start to uh, add some lights to it, some bright lights. First, I'm gonna slow down here. Slow it down, be a little more careful. Now I'm gonna pick up a brighter light. We'll try it right here for, to start with. Step back. Okay, the sheen, that's good. The sheen is starting to work. In other words, if you've set yourself up through the appropriate stages, when you do those final punches, hopefully it's gonna work really well. Hopefully. You may, you still may be off. So, as I am, I can see areas where I need to kind of push it. But I got, that sheen is exactly the kind of sheen that I was looking for. So I've got a, it's a mixture of Naples yellow and white and medium. It's those, it's, the medium allows me to lay it on without over mixing it into the paint that's there. Just have to decide how far down I want to bring that sheen. I'm just, I'm looking at my subject and deciding. Okay. Step back. I wanted to see if I was kind of in the right ballpark, which looks like I am. Try to amplify that sun and really, really get it to kind of uh, spank down on this thing and really illuminate it, finalize it, so to speak. Get in the sheen. Still don't have it going down far enough. It works its way, although it gets a little bit more ochery, a little bit more as it goes down. It's not quite as white. So what I do, mix a little bit more of that orange 
kind of yellow-orange mixture into it that I had. I like to sneak up on the lights. Now, in an hour and a half painting, you're not gonna, you're, you know, sneaking up is a relative word. You're not necessarily really sneaking up on it because you're, you're trying to accomplish it before the light changes too much. Get a little bit more light, right? I want to move on to other areas, but I see a nice piece of light. I like that phrase, piece of light. I'll tell you what, I wish I had coined that. I didn't. I was watching uh, a friend of Anna's and mine do a painting, a demonstration painting, which I love to watch. Uh, Sherry McGraw. And she goes, I'm going to lay down a piece of light. And I thought, I like that. That's a piece of light. Woo. So, I'm stealing it and saying, that's what I'm trying to do. Now, I want to get enough uh, differentiation. There's a beautiful cast shadow, and it has a very red quality to it. So I've actually brought some alizarin and cat orange into the colors I was using. I don't think it's dark enough. Yeah, it is. Now we're going to reestablish that shadow right there. Bring that reflected orange down a little bit, right down. Yep, need more orange in it. Got a little too white of a yellow. There we go. That's a that's a better color. Down here. Want to get a lot of this subtlety right here. Boy, that's just super subtle. I'll tell you, as it comes down here and it comes into this area, I probably have punched it. That's probably a little stronger than I need to. And it's not, but we feel the ribbing. I see it there. I see it down here a little bit. And right about here. Let me get back. So adding, I'm trying to add dimension. I'm really going to smack this right in here really hard a little later. Because it's not as light as it needs to be. All right, let's go to this pumpkin for a little bit. Let's start to amplify some of the, the lights on that baby. White, Naples, and maybe a little of the cad yellow deep. I think I mentioned my palette. White, Naples, yellow ochre, cad yellow deep, um, hue, cad orange hue, alizarin crimson, ultrine blue, sap green, and asphaltum. So that's my uh, that's my palette. Let's see what we're doing right here and see if this is going to work. That's pretty bright right there. Oh yeah, that's what I want. Oh, dirty paint, dirty paint. Didn't mean to pick that up. Messed that up really well. Went too light, and I messed the shadow up. So I got to go back and reestablish that shadow a little bit. That's because see, I was painting like I knew what I was doing. Um, thankfully, I kept the assumption that I was probably off. You see it get a little green. It's really weird as it goes into shadow there. These are super subtle color shifts. That's too dark. That's better.
little texture. Step it back. Don't like this at all. And that's my favorite. I just don't think it's working. Um, so we're gonna see what we can do with it. I think one of the things is I need to do something with the shadow of this. I just need to be a little more careful. You can plow along on these things like you're just cranking away, or you can be, you know, pretty careful. I'm trying to be kind of in between those two. I'm trying to be careful enough where it's believable, but still maintain the degree of painterly quality that I'm after. So, and it sounds, you know, it says, oh, that's what you want to do. That's fine. It's not easy. Okay, let's come in a little bit more on the uh, pumpkin on the left, some lights. I like that, I, don't, I hate to, I hate to destroy too much of some of the characteristics that I actually do like, but if it isn't working, you almost have to. You can't just say, well, I really like that look, which is, wonderful but if it's not working i don't care how much you like that one stroke or that one color it's not working you need to fix it boy did i mess that up i picked up too much of this color underneath so i'm going to come over that i want a cooler lighter color back here is what i was shooting for that's a little bit more than i wanted we're going to bring painterly you guys I hadn't planned on it being as painterly as it is but it truly doesn't bother me a lot now I think what I need to do with this pumpkin as as it faces downward I think I need to get a little darker and a little cooler because I'm not getting the roundness that I want out of it so I'm bringing a little bit ultramarine back into kind of this color I was using here and we're going to try and squeeze that in down towards the base. Usually I like to do this before I do some of the other stuff. But sometimes you don't realize things until later. And when that's the case, fix it. And that helped a little bit. I, oh, I know what it is I need to do. I can see that right now. Shape. The shape of that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clarify the shape again. I've done it two or three times, but I just caught something. And I can always go back on the ground plane anytime. Lighten it, because I think I'm going to lighten the ground plane right at the end anyway. Um, Okay, let's go into the main pumpkin, this guy, and amplify some of those oranges. Really push them. Got to step back. What I'm doing is working. I wish I would have done it earlier on. I'm amplifying light to shadow. And as I stand back, it works pretty good. If I there's still I still am not pleased about something about this shape. It's not quite there. I think it's too flat on the bottom is what it is. I just 
changing it, I'm hoping I can get, achieve what I feel is lacking in it. Now, I get a little bit of a shadow in that orange right there. Okay. Let's, how are you doing time-wise? Let's see about laying some um, strong lights on this. So, medium, white, Naples. And I added a little bit more white than I've used at other times. Don't want to press too hard. Make that light almost feel like it's screaming. If I make it too light, I can always go back and add detail into it. works I kind of obliterated almost a little too much detail out of this one area so what I'm going to do is is go back and put a little bit of it back in right there if that's too strong I'll just wipe it out I like that a little bit of reflective I've got going in there so I, I may amplify that in a, a couple other areas um, maybe one right that kind of obliterates there. It's over here more. I don't want to get too much reflect. You get too much reflective light, you destroy the light side. So I want to be careful about that. Now, before I do much, I want to push that ground plane a little bit lighter and brighter. That's often the case. I've done enough still lifes demonstrate. I really don't paint still lifes for me. I really only paint them as demonstrations. But um, when I have done them as demos, I've noticed right at the end, I usually end up punching that ground plane even more. and mix it right into that paint that's there. And that way it doesn't stand out too much. I can do it here too, just by painting back over. Just by painting back over, same color, you can actually take that strong color that you're laying in right there and push it right back, see I just messed that up, push it right back into the paint. We've lost the light. This is all changed now, back here. It's all changed because starlight's changed. That's what's probably happening a little bit on the pumpkins. So you kind of don't want to chase the light. I like to break that edge so it's not that harsh. 
A lot of times it's just a dry brush. Sometimes it's an up and down, but anything will do it. Just, you don't want that edge to be too overstated. Now that, that this ground plane feels better now. Don't be satisfied. Just, you think you get it in there and you realize it's not what you want. We're about uh, 20 minutes away, which is allowing me to go back and fix things that I am not pleased with. Want to, get, want to get the in, feeling of that stripe striation you need a little bit more in here so what's happening is as i'm looking at the piece my eye is darting over the whole piece so i'm looking at areas and saying okay that isn't right i gotta fix that okay that looks pretty good that is you know and so you're kind of going through little by little things that you pretty sure you can make work better And when you're, when you're doing this kind of work, particularly on, on location, you, you really have to use your time wisely. Where am I going to put my time in? So everything, like if, it, what I do, if I wanted to do a perfect still life, um, I would have built this much slower. Probably the same kind of thinking. I don't think I would have changed a lot of my thought process. Uh, the di only difference is that I would have been slower slower in the buildup so that but sometimes i found this is something i found in my own work if i go too slow sometimes i go too i found this on pieces i'm working on right now um for a couple shows when i slow down too much i overdo the refinement in other words sometimes i wish i could go back and on pieces I, I'm just assuming everybody's in the same boat I am, so you may be, you may not be, but you can go back on pieces and realize that you just almost went a little too far. It would have been better to keep it a little freer. So, you know, when I'm doing something like this, the fact that I'm kind of uh, giving myself a shorter amount of time, I have to be a little bit freer. And so I, I learned something from doing these relatively quicker paintings. And I think I've mentioned to people, I generally don't paint this fast. I mean, I hear people say, oh, you paint so fast. I demonstrate fast. I don't paint fast. I don't think I paint fast at all. I'm not, I don't paint slow either. My goal is to paint good. Not fast, not slow, but good. And good is kind of a relative term because we are all gonna like certain types of art. I might like one type better and you might like another type better. Well, does that make me right and you wrong? No, it just, it's taste. And it's something that we all have to kind of deal with as to, as painters. What kind of painting do we want to do compared to all these the masterpieces that we've seen through the centuries, some of the wonderful contemporary artists that are painting? So how is it we want to paint? And I think it's a question we all constantly have to wrestle with. And I know I do. I, uh, depends on what week it is. You know, I finish a show and I look at their work and I go, it's okay, but I want to paint thicker, or I want to paint tighter, or I want to paint looser. Generally, I don't say I want to paint tighter, but all those things come into play. Let's see, I want too light, too fat. I wanted an orange, so I just go back with an orange over it and mellow it down a little bit, just tone it down. 
Now, the lights changed quite a bit, so I have to kind of keep in mind how it was and I, I, do I want to chase the light? Absolutely not. Uh, it's just one of those things that you have to be careful with your painting outside. When you're painting a still life indoors uh, from a one, you know, if I want to paint a tight, a really refined still life, I'm going to probably paint it indoors. I'm going to set up a light and that light's going to stay consistent. That light's going to stay exactly um, the same and that way I can go back to it day after day. Okay, so here's white, just a touch of Naples and a lot of medium. A few little bright highlights. Stepping back a little bit. Stepping, boy, it looks better when I step about 10 feet away than when I'm right on top of it. When I'm right on top of it, there's little things that bother me. Um, and, although, you know, it's really meant, paintings are not meant to necessarily, unless they're really beautifully rendered, uh, they're not really meant to look at from standing right on top of them. They're really meant to look at from a distance. Some of the paint qualities I have in it, I'm happy with. Some of the, the chunkier paint qualities. So it's kind of a chunky... <laughs> I'm not talking about me. Um, just kind of a chunky still life. A loose, chunky still life, which is, I guess, what I was shooting for. I wasn't necessarily shooting for a super refined still life. And once again, I can go back and clarify some things with the shape. So we're going to take it. We're going to bring up, down. It's going to go down around. It's going to come up where the indentations are. Down. a little bit of final refinements on the uh, stems. There, clean this area up down here, get that really beautiful shadow working its way across that pumpkin. And there's that shadow. That worked pretty well. We could, I could do a little bit of reflective quality. First, I want to clarify this shadow one time. And then I will bring a little bit of orange. Oh, nope. Got the color right, the value wrong. We want to get a little bounce light from that one pumpkin back into the little, little one sitting on top. Kind of lost the shape here. I did lose the shape of the, of the upper part of the, this pumpkin. And it's got a little, it's got some. I keep stepping back to see how it looks. My feeling right now, I think the big pumpkin's working pretty well. 
Um, this pumpkin's starting to come along. This is really loose, but there's also something about it I kind of like. So um, even though there are parts of it that I can see problems with. Now, I'm, I see it get cool. So what I did is I mixed up kind of a blue. into that stem and as I stand back it works I'm okay with it let's put it that way I've amplified that color just a little bit shape this a little bit more bring a little bit of reflected light into it and A little more reflected light. Step back. See how I feel? I think, I don't think this is coming off as it goes into shadow. I, I didn't realize that at first, but when I stepped back just now, and I'm probably a little darker than I need to be, but it doesn't matter. It still has to read. And it, I don't feel it is really reading right now. So I think this needs to go darker. I'm going to try it and see how it feels. a little bit more indication in there as as I stand back it feels better now than it did before I did it but I also see it get a little darker whoops that's kind of crap whoa look what I had on my finger that white color didn't mean to um, as it goes down here it's a little darker too there there. I gotta change what I messed up. So it's it's basically the background color. And it's not that difficult a thing to change because it's the two colors with no white. It's the blue, the brown, with no white, and we just kind of cover it. Get the indentation there. I got that this stem a little too high and I don't mind that give it a little bit more character I think what happened is when I put the light on that edge I kind of messed up the shape the top of it has that nice piece of light hitting it and then the left side of it has that beautiful light edge right here. So we're getting the illumination of that sunlight. Isn't quite what I want right in here. That bright, and I think I can only go that, I can't go lighter than that, which means the orange is probably a little uh, lighter than it needs to be because the highlight isn't standing out. If, if you can only go to white and it isn't working, that tells you that you're a little off in the other color. It's not a, not a tremendously difficult problem to solve. It's just understanding what's wrong. That's what's sometimes harder. The hardest part to solve is what's wrong with it? There's something wrong, it's not working. It's weird how we get a little bit of orange reflection down as the stem turns downward. It gets some orange in here. So it bring a little, brings a little life to it. It's like adding the blue when I added that cool blue in there. 
It's like in here, I can see some cooler colors. Sometimes you notice them later as your eye becomes more uh, accustomed to looking at the subject that you're painting. You'll all of a sudden notice things. Um, and it's not that they weren't there before, but it re really wasn't time for you to, to look at them. So. I like some of the loose edges. That, that's some of the parts of it that I think um, I'm, I'm pleased with. You know, there, there are parts that you say, well, I know I could do better at. And then there's other parts that you say, geez, I kind of like it. So I'm gonna take that background, plain this color if I can, whatever it is. And I wanna just cut in a little bit right there. And I'll come closer to the edge. And this kind of bothers me right here. And I think it's, it's a reflected light that it needs back in there. And I put it in once, and then I kind of took it out when I hit the shadow. So we're gonna slightly pull that back. We're gonna pull it there. I'm gonna look up at this pumpkin. Anything we need to do there? So right now it's just scouring for problems because we're close to done. And as I think I said, my whole intent in this was to do a nice painterly piece. And hopefully we've achieved that. I know I achieved the painterly. I don't know about the nice part. It's good. It's great. And I'm just, you know, the, the light has been changing, so I'm kind of, I'm not chasing it, but I am um, dealing with it. Let's put it that way. Took my big sloppy brush with a little brown and the blue. We're going to take that shadow and bring it that way a little bit more. Angles look pretty good. I don't think, well, sunlight's changed, so I don't want to say I was wrong. I'm wrong there. The sunlight has changed, and when it changes, you're better not, if you keep change, if you keep chasing the sunlight, here's what happens. You keep changing your painting. Keep saying, well, it's not right. I'll fix this. And pretty soon, it starts as one type of painting and it ends as another. So, you know, my advice is don't chase the light. Be true to uh, your concept that you started with and um, li live with it. But that's, that's not indoor still life. That's really plain air still life that I'm talking about right now. Plain air maybe outside dealing with the, the sun and all the elements there. The only thing I did is I put a couple backgrounds in there because I wanted to pop this this thing. So in order to get it to pop, I knew if I put a dark background in it, I'd get the thing working a lot better. A little bit of reflected light, show those edges off. A little bit right here too, I can see. Okay, so the question is, how believable is it? I don't know. I've been looking at this damn thing for so long, I can't tell. Have you ever found yourself in that situation? You know what You know what you do then? Take a break. Which I'm gonna do in a little bit. I'm gonna take a nice walk, get a little exercise, and then go in my studio and work on a bunch of things that I'm working on. This is kind of fun, kind of a nice change. Haven't done, like I said, this may be the first plain air still life I've ever done. I don't, can't recall. I mean, I've painted things, oh. I've painted things, but I haven't painted um, a still life. I painted, I remember painting a wheelbarrow one time on location, painted cars, but never an actual setup. In any event, hopefully you guys got out of this um, something of value. That's my goal, each each and every one of these, is to, for you guys to get something of value out of it that helps you. And um, so I'm a little different this week, but that's what we ended up with, is our still life pumpkin. 
So we lost that piece of light back there. It's gone. <laughs> Knew it was going to happen. Okay. I'm going to call it quits for right now. And um, wish you all a uh, happy Thanksgiving, which is going to be uh, about five days away, six days away. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we're probably just going to post an oldie. So if you guys don't have anything you want to do on that Friday, you can look uh, look up and see one of the uh, one of these from the past. All right. Other than that, we'll see you uh, right after the week after Thanksgiving, first week of December. Or in, is it the first week of December? Or is it the last week of? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's December second. Okay, everybody. Have a good one.